The history of NASA's space travel can often be broken down into defining moments and periods. Say, for example, the 1970s legendary moon landings, or the three decades of use with the space shuttle, or even the construction of the International Space Station. Even today's modern space environment can be defined with its lofty ambitions with NASA's next generation rocket system, the SLS, which will hopefully carry man to moon, Mars, and beyond in the near future. There are many tools astronauts rely on for the challenging and critical space missions. Of course, there are a thousand correct answers, but the focus of this video will center around NASA's use of personal spacecraft used for spacewalk, otherwise known as Extravehicular Mobility Units, or EMU for short. Across NASA's program, crew members have utilized various EMU styles and form factors to fit the specific spacewalking task. Developing a spacesuit is challenging. Across the last 70 years of spaceflight history, there's only been a handful of successful EVA suit designs. Initially, the United States and Russian engineers were modifying flight suits, otherwise known as intravehicular activity suits, with spacewalk life support systems for the mission series of Mercury and Gemini. As time progressed, full-fledged extravehicular suits were eventually developed by both nations, Russian with their Orlon suit, in the United States with their EMU suit. The US EMU suit provides full life support capabilities as akin to a space vehicle, but in the form factor of a personalized pressurized suit. These all-in-one units protect astronauts from the harsh realities of space while performing critical mission essential extravehicular activities for often long periods of time. During STS-102, James Foss and Susan Helm share the title for longest spacewalk in US history with a recorded time of 8 hours and 56 minutes. Bear in mind that EVAs are no simple feat. There are potentially thousands of things that could endanger an astronaut's life, from catastrophic failures like a loss of pressure, to simple mundane things like an inability to regulate temperature or poor grip and dexterity. Due to the pressure of an EVA suit, it's no simple feat to even bend or move or even to grip something. The human body's mobility and the suit's pressure have an inverse relationship. While there is an argument to be said that performing a spacewalk is incredibly dangerous, it's also the fundamental foundation for a continued presence in space. According to one report from the NASA Office of Internal Inspector General, NASA astronauts have conducted 18 moonwalks, 23 EVAs to repair and maintain the Hubble telescope, 82 EVAs during shuttle missions, and 192 EVAs to support the International Space Station. As NASA has extended the life of the ISS to 2030, we will see continued usage of the current EMU fleet, even as some of those current suits on orbit are pushing 45 years. However, as we'll see later in the video, NASA is learning just how far repairing, maintaining, and refurbishing the EMU fleet will carry them. During NASA's second human spaceflight program, Gemini, astronauts had the primary objective to test equipment and procedures designed to eventually land humans onto the lunar surface. While primitive compared to today's technology, astronauts still risk life and limb to be some of the first humans to float in space. To accomplish this, Gemini astronauts utilized suits inspired from those from the high-altitude hypersonic rocket-powered aircraft, the X-15. These were simple altitude pressurized suits with six layers of protection modified to protect astronauts from the vacuum of space. Notice that this design lacked life support systems for continued and independent operation. Hence, they required a dedicated umbilical feeding the astronaut gaseous oxygen throughout the duration. This was their sole source for survival during a EVA. That's why in basically all early EVA videos, you will see an astronaut floating in space connected to their vehicle or structure with a life support umbilical. In this video, Gemini 4 astronaut Ed White performed the first American spacewalk. For more than 20 minutes, Ed floated around right outside the Gemini capsule connected via a 20-foot umbilical line and a safety line. The small pressurized tool in his right hand was called a handheld maneuvering unit or HHMU for short and it was his only real source to maneuver about the microgravity environment. The entire spacewalk progressed incredibly well. It was clear that throughout the spacewalk, Ed was enjoying himself thoroughly, and at one point he radioed, quote, 
the sun in space is not blinding, but quite nice. And, quote, I'm very thankful in having the experience to be first. While the very first EVA was a major advancement in spaceflight and suit technology, the shortcomings of the Gemini suit would soon be revealed. On the third ever EVA using the Gemini suit as a part of the Gemini 9 mission, and only a year after Ed's monumental accomplishment, Eugene Cernan almost died. As soon as Stafford and Cernan depressurized the spacecraft and opened the hatch above Cernan's head, he immediately discovered how difficult it was to move. His pressure suit was hard as a rock in the space vacuum, and his lower half was almost immobilized by the metallic pants. In his memoirs, he described his spacesuit as having, quote, all the flexibility of a rusty suit of armor. The Apollo mission series marked the first time NASA would attempt to land on the moon. With that, they'd need a proper spacesuit that could allow astronauts to fully explore the lunar surface. They'd be expected to travel far distances, and the suit would need to allow for flexibility in the shoulders, arms, legs, and waist in order to function in the microgravity and the moon's one-sixth gravity. This is when it can be said that the creation of the Apollo EVA spacesuit is actually the creation of the world's smallest spacecraft. That is to say that this suit would self-contain everything an astronaut would need to function completely independently of the spacecraft support system. For the first time ever, a self-contained portable life support system, otherwise known as a PLIS, would be needed in addition to the protective pressurized suit. The PLIS, aka the backpack of the suit, contained all of the pressurized oxygen, breathing air, water, and communication networks for the astronaut. The clever engineers of the time were able to cram all of this into a small enough package that it could be worn on the back of the suit, just as the nickname suggests, as a backpack. The other major change of the suit was the improvement of the pressure garment. During the Gemini missions, the Gemini suit only had six layers to protect astronauts from the vacuum of space. The Apollo series of EVA suits had 14 layers, five layers of aluminized mylar, four layers of Dacron, two layers of aluminized film, two layers of thermal protection, and one outer layer to provide flame slash fire protection. This new upgraded suit also led to the iconic Snoopy cap astronauts had to wear to utilize the comm networks of the PLIS. While the Apollo missions saw amazing success with the EMU suits, there were still incredibly valuable lessons still to be learned. Firstly, the suits were incredibly awkward to maneuver in. There are so many clips of astronauts hopping from place to place instead of traditionally walking. Or even worse, there are clips of the tumbles, trips, and falls of astronauts throughout the Apollo missions. The suit just didn't have enough flexibility to completely mimic the natural human body form. In this clip, astronaut Charles Duke demonstrates just how challenging it is to simply just retrieve a dropped yeah, hammer. Right. I do that all the time. Usually I have my thumb in the way. Comedic or no, due to the short-lived nature of the Apollo missions, this never truly became a severe detriment to any of the crews. The now iconic boxy white NASA EMU spacesuit has been used by basically all non-Russian astronauts since 1974. These suits have served as the backbone to the construction and maintenance of the ISS. Without EMUs, how could have massive projects like the repair to the Hubble Space Telescope or the construction of the ISS been completed. The space station measures approximately 356 feet or 109 meters end to end, which is just one yard shy of a full length American football field. Its largest modules were delivered and assembled in orbit across 40 separate shuttle flights, including 600 tasks and 1,260 EVA hours. Now check out this amazing animation showing the overall ISS assembly across the 20 years of shuttle flights.
The original baseline version of the EMU suit was fabricated in 1983 by Hamilton Standard, a subcontractor for Collins Aerospace and the suit was produced by ILC Dover. While a revised, upgraded version of the suit began rolling out to all suits beginning in 1998, from 2002 to present, all EMU suits in service are the enhanced EMU variant. This includes upgrades to the hard upper torso, heated gloves, changes to the contamination control protocol, and compatibility to the safer system the Simplified Aid or EVA Rescue System. According to a report from the NASA Office of the Inspector General, as of April 2017, only 11 suits remain operational. The report also notes that because the associated technology is dated, the exact cost to rebuild each unit is unknown. Estimates range as high as $250 million per spacesuit. Two suits were destroyed in the Columbia disaster. Two suits were destroyed in the Challenger disaster. One suit is currently used as a flight-ready mock-up for ground support of vacuum chamber operations. One was destroyed in the SpaceX cargo mission mishap, in which an overpressurization of the upper stage liquid oxygen tank caused a major mission failure and the loss of over 5,000 pounds of hardware and supplies, including one EMU suit. And one was accidentally destroyed during ground testing. The base level of the current suits used on ISS were only developed with an initial lifetime of 15 years but due to the lack of commercial suit innovation and the ultra-reliability of the suits, this lifetime has been extended and extended. Like previously mentioned, some of the current suits on orbit are pushing 45 years. I hope to cover it in a future video, but the next generation of spacesuits cannot be reliably expected for service for at least a few more years. In the meantime, NASA will need to bandage together its remaining flight-ready EMUs and resolve ongoing issues such as the following Issues involving the lengthy pre-breed procedures to prevent decompression sickness. Constrained hard upper torso sizing limits astronauts participation and can lead to shoulder injuries. EMU components in EVA operations can cause uncomfortable and dangerous body temperature. Suit gloves can cause hand fatigue and injuries. EMUs do not provide recommended levels of hydration and nutrition. EMUs can experience cross water and ventilation loops. Component sensitivity to water contamination. Several EMU systems do not meet fault tolerance requirements for the ISS. Issues due to the fact that the EMU PLIS was not designed to be maintained on orbit. Looking towards the future, there are many questions revolving around spaceflight and spacewalks, but I think everyone can agree that it's going to be a very exciting next couple years. Never before have we witnessed so much competition in the space arena with SpaceX, Blue Origin, NASA's SLS system, and even Boeing's CST if it ever flies. So if you enjoy this type of content and want to follow along, please subscribe as I aim to produce more content like this on a reoccurring basis.